Hey, Spinnies. Um, it's been a long while. And uh, trust me, I've gone many, many times to upload this story time. Like, I've lost count. And I think I'm finally able to do it this time. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice that my background's different. And um, as much as I love my family, I was raised to be independent. And I'd absolutely love to say that I won my SSI case. And I moved in with some friends and I'm renting a room. And uh, sadly, that's not the case. Um, I think it would have made the story time a lot easier if that were the case. You know, quick update. Yeah, I'm alive. Yeah, I'm sorry I haven't recorded. And that'd be the end of it. But um, it's not. You're going to notice a um, my headphone on because YouTube has gotten pretty uptight about music in the background. It doesn't matter if it's streaming. doesn't matter if it, you are streaming it even from their own site and it's going in the background. They just cut your video like that. They don't care. So, um, yeah, I'm listening to this to keep my concentration. Um, so, <laughs> maybe you guys will remember um, the news last year about Northern California. Um, I know you probably won't wouldn't have heard much about where I lived. Um, but you probably would have heard Santa Rosa, Napa. Yeah. The one, the places that were like an hour and 30 away from me. <laughs> but um, since I no longer live there, I can divulge where I lived. I lived in River Valley, California, not too far from Tom Kai Road. And, um, the fire there, what took care of Willits Grade, Potter Valley, also took down Red Valley. And I lost my family home that night. And it's taken me so long to record this is because I didn't even know where to start. It was a scramble for God. The scrambling is just now starting to slow down a year later. And I'm sorry, you're going to be hearing my little cousin stomp around. I'm happy he's here. He's uh, moved in temporarily, my little munchkin. Story about him later on in the series. But, um, we, uh, we lost the house. And, um, I guess if you guys don't really want to hear the entire story, you can skip out now and wait for my next video. But for those who are interested in the whole deal, um, stick on. You know. So, um, I had my hernia surgery, which I told you all I was recovering from. The last video I did was pretty much close to when the fire happened. Um, that week was just an absolute week from hell. It happens in threes, guys. I'm, I'm not kidding you. It happens in threes. Um, Kitty and I were going out. <laughs> I kind of kept that under wrap. So, um... We decided to take a break. Um, so that was decided a few days. And like a few days before the fire. And another few days before the fire, um, my granddad had a heart attack. Um, <laughs> no more got him home. Thank God it was caught in time. Thank God I... I wasn't even home. I freaked, I totally freaked out my doctor. 
because I'm a big, tough girl. I don't cry unless I am ticked off or I'm frustrated. But when I got that call, I was so scared. You know, he called me in the office and told me, like, you know, don't freak out. Really? Really? The, that part just drives me crazy. Don't freak out. What do you think I'm going to do? You know? He's like, don't freak out, but I'm having a heart attack and I'm being airlifted to Santa Rosa. So that hit me in the middle of the doctor's office because I couldn't figure out why. Like, why is he calling so much? Why is he calling so much? Like, oh, fine. Yeah, I'm in the doctor's office. What's wrong? I'm across the street and um, I'm being airlifted to Santa Rosa. I had a heart attack. Mm. So by the time the nutritionist was coming in to see me, um, I was bawling like a baby. <laughs> I, I admit it, I was bawling like a baby. And she like stopped mid tracks and was like, do you want to reschedule? <laughs> um, no, I'm already here. You know, my granddad said there's something really I could do, so. All right, so he made a resolution to quit, completely stop smoking. About time. You know how many years I've been shoving mods in that man's face? Years. Years. Every mod I've ever gotten, including my mech mods. Right up in the face. I tried. So, Saturday, they allowed him to come home, and the whole car ride home, like, I brought his vape gear, and the whole car ride home, I was telling him, it's like, you're not doing crap, you are laying on the couch, you aren't doing anything other than to get up, use the bathroom, go back to the couch, read, watch TV, and then go to bed. That's it. You ain't, you ain't doing crap. So, I am, um, we had been invited to my cousin's wedding, so I was trying to knit as fast as I can for that and get my other projects done. So, come Sunday night, the winds were just, wow, the winds were incredible. It's, I've always freaked out over high winds ever since I was a kid. My mom got me over thunderstorms, which I now think are cool, but still with the high winds, I don't know what it is, it just, it freaks me out. So, I already decided that Sunday night I wasn't getting any sleep which was the ninth, and, um, you know, and I was kicking back, and I was working on my Aunt Shaw for my cousin's wedding, and I took videos. I, I'm not that good of an editor, otherwise I'd include it in this clip. Um, if anyone's interested, I can find a way to upload them. But I posted in my knit group, I'm like, wow, like, I am so not getting any sleep tonight. This is, this is so freaky. Like, my curtains were flying up to my ceiling, and it, the wind chimes were going crazy. It's like, I'm not getting any sleep tonight. So come around 12, um, I heard my mom on the deck with our house guest, who had come to kind of help out a little bit while I was recovering from a hernia surgery, and <sighs> so I was curious, you know, I, I stopped, I stopped Netflix, and I walked out, and I asked if everything's okay, you know, and then I looked, and I saw the hill over Potter Valley was on fire. I saw the glow, and I'm like, oh crap, you know, my my granddad created this program years upon years ago of a firefighting simulation. Here's winds that are past 30 miles per hour and there's a fire. So the hills, the Potter Valley Hill was the front of my house. Um, so I'm like, well, I definitely know I'm not sleeping tonight. <laughs> you know, screw sleep. This is, this sleep is not happening. And, you know, I helped my mom back in the room and got her settled and told her, like, look, you know, if you need anything, I I have 
Facebook up. I have my phone fully charged. I, you know, just get a hold of me. And I'm going to go back in, put my headphones in, because <laughs> this is freaking me out, and try and get some more work done. So, just like, okay, so I go back in, and then all of a sudden, I hear mom come in the house. And mom's in a wheelchair. She shouldn't be up in our legs, as per doctor's orders, because of her wounds. So I go out and mom is gently trying to wake up my granddad. And this is around one. So, excuse me one second. This is like around 1 a.m. And just then, we only had one warning. Um, the local fire department came down the road and said, this is a manual Mandatory, I'm sorry, mandatory evacuation. If anyone could hear this, you you guys need to leave. Well, it's not the first time we've heard this in the 32 years of living in River Valley, where we lived at. So I'm like, okay, guys, in case this is for real, you know, we need to get a fire plan. Everyone, split. Really? Like, am I packing? Am I shaving because Monday morning I had to go to my electrolysis appointment. So I had full werewolf going on because I'm trying to get rid of this. And that was like, you know, get dressed and I guess start packing. I'm like, ah, crap. So I went in my room and just then we lost power. So I'm like, okay, this is really bad. So everything that was in the circle where I was standing got grabbed and thrown in my huge ass suitcase. And there's just so much confusion and commotion in there. And, and like my granddad was out opening up pasture gates for our sheep and scouting the place because he knew spot fires could happen, especially with the winds. And when I went out, um, I think I went out to the handicapped room or the apartment, whichever you want to call it, because the way our house was set up is we had the main house, we had the deck, and then from the deck we had the family room, which we turned into the disabled room. And, you know, it was great for wheelchairs and stuff like that. So we just kept it that way. And that was where I stayed out with my mom until um, our guest came to help out a little bit. So I was in the main house. So I went out and um, mom was starting to pack. And I then saw the hills beside us were on fire. And I was like, you know, this, this isn't happening. This is messed up. Like, oh my God, all those lives, all those houses, all those animals, like this, this isn't happening. This is messed up. So, um, after data came in and was getting all the oil lamps, he was like, he asked me, like, do you need an oil lamp in your room so you can see what you're doing to get your stuff and get out? I'm like, no. He's like, well, I'm going to go find one. So I went out on the upper deck and I saw the Willits grate on fire. Willits was behind us. And I saw the fire coming down the hill. I knew we were screwed then. Sorry. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> I heard the propane tanks popping off and I saw the fire coming down the hill and I, 
you know, I saw cars going past our house with things loaded up to the guild. And, you know, that house for 32 years was fortress. It was a fortress, you know, no matter how many fire scares we had, you know, our, our fire department had it, but, um, so after I saw that, I put more hustle in my step. Um, I had already shaved, I already tossed on my makeup, I already planned on canceling my appointment because, hey, I shaved. There's no point to the appointment now. Um, and uh, I went in and I grabbed what I could, got everything that was in a circle that I deemed necessary into my, um, my large suitcase and, um, I went back out to check on my mom because there is an issue with Dia and, um, mom was barely packed. Dia wasn't caught. She had Burby, her service cat, but we couldn't get Dia. I, um, I bent down trying to get her and by then the fire was on Foothill, which is a road away from us. And um, when I bent down and came back up, I looked over and our neighbor's pasture was on fire. Our next door neighbor. I knew we had to fly as I went in because I need to get my medicine and I need to get my purse because of all times. I bring my person, I bring my artwork in. Of course, shit like that happens. So, um, I yell at my granddad, you know, get mom in the car. Get mom in the car. I need to go get my medicine and I need to go throw my stuff outside of the house. Like, we need to bounce now. And, um, I went in and I was just throwing all my stuff out the room. Um, and by then the fire department got there and, um, one of them came in the house and I was just reaching for my purse and my medications and she grabbed me and hauled me out. It was just, it was hell on earth. I, I can't even put into words the scene that was going on. Um, you know, I, I didn't even realize that my uncle's trailer that was close to my room at the time was on fire. And, um, you know, she was, I helped load everything in my car and I realized stupid thing is it's, it's really stupid what us people do in crisis like this. But I realized that the house is gone. The house is going, the house is going to go. Best case scenario, my room is gone. And maybe the living room and maybe the kitchen will survive and the family room survive because we had the pool, the doughboy pool, big pool. And um, I figured I'm going to lose a lot of things, you know, and I, I can't lose this one thing. So I went in and I went running in, thank God for that, <laughs> for that stationary bike training and shh to Dr. B because I'm not supposed to run. Um, I ran in and grabbed my key and I attempted again to get my medications in my purse and the fire lady came in, picked me up by the belt of my pants and ran my ass out the house and shoved me in the car. I was only able to grab monkey. So, um, we were able to save one of our feral kitties. Bad hair day, but she ended up passing away at a later date. And, um, um, yeah, didn't make it. I'm sorry. It's just, um, y'all knew she was my fur child. And I, um, 
my mom was more important than my cat. And I am so, so grateful that neither my mom or my granddad had another heart attack during all that. And if my Nana had been alive, that would have killed her. But, um, so thankfully my granddad made a switch over to USAA and, um, it's an incredible insurance. They had us in a hotel room by 3 p.m. that day. But um, first thing I got, I did when we got down to the school is I called everyone, told everyone, like, yeah, the house is gone. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure the house is gone, and um, but we're all okay. We're alive. And then I called to check on Kitty because I heard a fire broke out in Clear Lake. And that freaked me out. And I knew Santa Rosa was burning and I had some friends there. I knew Napa was burning and a friend's um, sister lived there. And I was, it was chaos. But, um, so we spent about a couple weeks in a hotel, which that was awkward. You have two night owls. And you have one early bird and someone who is extremely cranky when their sleep is disturbed. <laughs> yeah. Then we found an apartment, um, moved in there before Halloween, but I, I had to go forego my cousin's wedding, which annoys me, but none of us were in good health. It was everyday doctor's appointments. It was every day in and out, it was, you know, scrambling. It was scrambling. I had to scramble to get my license. I had to scramble to get my social security card. I had to scramble to show, you know, to get proof of the ownership of the car. I had to just scramble, 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 get our medicines, get our everything. You know, we got out with what we were able to carry. And, um, so after, I really wish we kind of wouldn't have gone to the apartment we went to, but because the energy was just like horrid. I've already told you guys I've, I, I'm an empath, so I let that little cat off the bag. The energy there was just horrid. It wasn't the greatest part of town, but it was a two bedroom apartment. It was a two bedroom apartment and anything was better than sharing a hotel room with my granddad. I love him. And dad, if you're watching this, I love you. Mm, but no, <laughs> that, that was interesting and not fun rolled into one. So, um, we jumped at it. And again, my granddad's insurance paid for it. It's just, that insurance, I, I have nothing bad to say about that insurance. They're incredible. Um, and there we stayed until January. Mom had been in and out of the hospital. If it wasn't a doctor's appointment, it was hospital time. There is appointments every day, including Saturday, because the doctor we see, she works on Saturdays. Um, it's just, I was just so drained. I was just so sick. I even ended up getting um, my first speeding ticket because I was so sick and wasn't paying attention. But it was the only day I could go and get my glasses because I there wasn't a day I didn't have a migraine because I didn't have my glasses. And that was the only day I could go get it. And it's, my granddad was in funk and still trying to recover from the heart attack. And, you know, it was one of those things, like, if you don't do it, it's not going to get done type situation. So, yeah, that speeding ticket was interesting. I didn't find it because, no, I, I had no business being out on the road with a temperature of 101. And driving to Santa Rosa to go pick up my prescription glasses. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, finally, February, we moved here 
to Lake County. And that has been interesting with insurance and everything. In fact, um, I just got off the phone with my with partnership trying to keep the current doctor I have because she's the only one that hasn't tried to off me yet. Mm. But yeah, that's basically what's been going on. You know, it just now settled down. It just now settled down. And um, I didn't have time to... I basically had to cut down all the stuff that wasn't essential for me. So I stopped my electrolysis appointments. That and the fact that there wasn't a day that I couldn't, you know, could not go without shaving. So, you know, the whole key point with electrolysis, you need to go in with at least four days worth of growth for the technician to work on you and kill all the root follicles and pick them out. So I had to cancel that. I'm going to start that up again because this stuff needs to go. I am so tired of makeup. I'm so tired of covering up and I'm so tired of shaving. It's, it's ridiculous. Thank you, PCOS. But, um, so far outside of my depression taking a huge spike and my anxiety taking this huge spike, you know, my health has kind of been okay. Though so I've been in the negative spoon spoon zone for a while. And I know it's probably not relevant anymore the spoon theory, but until I find something better, it's just what I'm going to use. So that's been my life. I am going to try and talk about things as they arise. I did not forget about the series. I know I'm horrible with it, but, um, yeah. So just now piecing life back together. Anyway, Spoonies, that's my story time. Um, I don't really have much else to add to it. So, I love you guys. I hope for a pain-free day. Zero flares, though I know that's rare. And I hope to catch you all next time. Bye.